Polis menafikan kononnya terdapat objek terbang yang tidak dikenali UFO berlega-lega di ruang angkasa Kuala Krai, Kelantan seperti yang telah diviralkan menerusi media sosial. Menurut Ketua Polis Daerah Kuala Krai, Superintenden Abdullah Roning, pihaknya tidak menerima sebarang laporan daripada penduduk kawasan berkenaan berhubung kejadian tersebut. Video itu disebarkan oleh pihak tertentu tanpa mengetahui sebabnya. Selain penyebaran video berdurasi 1 minit 25 saat menerusi media sosial itu, ia turut mengaitkan sumber maklumat itu kononnya daripada pertubuhan berita nasional Malaysia bernama. Berita yang diviralkan itu menyebut, penduduk Kuala Krai Kelantan dikejutkan dengan objek dipercayai UFO berlegar-legar di ruang angkasa berhampiran pusat cembung Batu Nang. Clay Symington is now a businessman. He was the Republican governor of Arizona for six years, elected when the first George Bush was president. Now, a decade after leaving the State House, he takes me to a Phoenix park and discloses something unlike anything uttered by any other high-level U.S. politician. If you if you had been here ten years ago and standing out here and looking up there at the uh, at the lights and the view, um, you would have been astounded. You would have been amazed. Governor Symington is referring to what is now known as the Phoenix Lights, an object videotaped by many and seen by thousands over several nights in the Arizona sky in 1997. Major sighting here. It was described by witnesses as larger than a football field and silent. It was a giant V, all right? And the right side of the V went over us. The left side was like a couple blocks over it. We just didn't know what to do. You know, it was just like... My God, how big is this thing? The great state of Arizona, Fife Symington. The former governor, a Vietnam Air Force veteran, had never publicly acknowledged seeing it until now. And I suspect that uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise, that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. So why didn't he say anything then? Partly, he says, because he didn't want people to panic. And I think as a public figure, you have to be very careful about what you say because uh, people can have pretty uh, emotional reactions and and, uh, and I said my goal wasn't to try to stir the pot. And he went to humorous and controversial lengths not to stir the pot. He held a news conference after the Phoenix Lights to announce the mystery had been solved. And now I'll ask Officer Stein and his colleagues to escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. Don't get him too close to me please. <laughs> In the alien costume, the governor's chief of staff. Now this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. <laughs> UFO enthusiasts were not amused, especially since the governor was believed to have seen nothing. But now he's coming out. The lights were really brilliant, uh, and it was just fascinating. It, I mean, it was, it was enormous. It just felt otherworldly. You know, you're, in your gut, you could just tell it was otherworldly. Symington will be talking about this in an updated film about UFOs called Out of the Blue. He has also talked with an organization that wants UFO information more out in the open. It's very significant that someone of the stature of a governor would come out and say that they acknowledge that they experienced uh, a UFO. 
um, because it brings a lot of credibility and strength to the case. Governor Simonton says he did tell his family, friends and staff about what he saw early on. I still behind the scenes uh, tried to investigate it, but I got nowhere. So what were the Phoenix lights? Well, frankly, we don't know. What we do know is that it's as much of a mystery today as it was a decade ago. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Phoenix. It's not a bird. Keep going up and up and up. It's not a plane. Here it's flipping around. Even this aviation expert is mystified. Uh, I can't identify it. We first learned about these strange sightings when this metro area man, who does not want to be identified, brought us his home video. You're going to see a little burst of fire right there, kind of a thruster. He captured the images on his digital camera from a hilltop in Federal Heights, looking south towards downtown Denver. Mile high is right about here. He says the flying objects appear around noon or 1 p.m. at least a couple of times a week. You're going to see it come in from the top, do a little loopy doop. The strangest part is they are flying too fast to see with the naked eye. This is the video in real time. Oof, see it? That was it. But if you slow it down frame by frame, it's there. We altered the color contrast to help you see it. Here's another one in real time. This is what it looks like slowed down. We wanted to verify that the video we saw was legit. So our photojournalist came out here with his camera. He set up in the same spot on 84th and Federal, and he shot video from just before noon until just after 1. And when we slowed down our photographer's video, we saw this flying object. I would consider myself an expert. Aviation expert Steve Cowell is a former commercial pilot, instructor, and FAA accident prevention counselor. It's very strange. He thought he would have a logical explanation until he watched the video. That is not an airplane. That is not a helicopter. Those are not birds. Um... Uh, I can't identify it. Cowell told us he knows of no aircraft that flies as fast. Because of the speed of the object, most people I think would miss it. Cowell did say there is one other possibility. Perhaps there's some sort of debris that's being raised up by some of the atmospheric winds. But in his professional opinion. As it fits the definition, it's an unidentified flying object. The FAA tracks all air traffic in Colorado and across the country. The FAA sent us a statement saying, we've checked with air traffic control and no one has had any reports of the activity you describe, nor have any of our employees observed anything of this nature, either visually or on their radar displays. The North American Aerospace Defense Command is located in Colorado Springs. It keeps an eye on the skies in case of an air attack against the U.S. NORAD sent us this statement. Our command center reviewed their records and they did not have any noted air activity in the Denver area during the times you indicated. There's the smokestack. The man who first brought this to our attention believes the UFOs are launching and landing near 56th and Clay in Denver. Here it comes, here it comes. What you got? Yep. Well, the Barry V carriage came from the, um, came from the store. Stretching all the way from Texas to the East Coast. Flash floods down south this morning, and that possible tornado destroying buildings and cars in Maryland. ABC Stephanie Ramos is on the scene in Salisbury for us. Good morning, Stephanie. Robin, good morning. The intense winds caused a path of destruction here in Salisbury, blasting a hole through this building here, leaving cinder blocks and debris scattered on the ground. And the storms aren't over yet. Lightning. Fires and floods. Oh, 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 oh. In Maryland, a possible tornado touching down. It sounded like uh, bulls are running across the uh, 
the roof. The violent winds sending vehicles flying, damaging homes and crumbling buildings. Security footage even showing one car flipping across a parking lot. Plus, a large storm system triggering emergency flash flood warnings in Houston this morning. Torrential downpours dumping up to six inches of rain. The water just like submerged our car. A similar scene in San Antonio, up to a half foot of rain falling fast. Rescue crews saving drivers trapped in rising flood waters. Water's just about going over the hood. And dangerous lightning strikes sparked numerous house fires throughout Texas. Pretty much the whole attic looked like it was on fire. This as we see new video from the moment that EF2 tornado touched down in Tulsa. Oh my goodness. It was just black and everything exploded. The family that shot this cell phone video says they didn't have time to escape the powerful twister. They all get away from the window. Next thing you know, the tornado is down and we're underneath the debris. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured here in Salisbury, but the mayor tells me it'll take some time for families and businesses to recover from the damage. Robin. Thinking of everybody there, Stephanie, thank you. And now let's go to Ginger for more on the flash flooding threat. Millions on alert, Ginger. Mm -hmm. And more than a dozen water rescues already performed this morning in Houston. You can see some of the images coming out. New numbers now indicate more than eight inches of rain has fallen in the last 24 hours. Six of it came in just six hours from about midnight till 6 a.m. So this is all from a stationary front and it's still going. The flash flood warning still in place near Houston there. Mississippi back through Arkansas. That stationary front doesn't move a lot. It bubbles around and that means you're going to see more rain. So Birmingham, Alabama, back through central Mississippi, even central Georgia. Other moves through Maryland and now the National Weather Service says it was likely a tornado that struck Salisbury. WJZ has first morning weather coverage. Bob Turks in the first morning weather center tracking the storm's path. But first, investigator Mike Helgren is in Salisbury with a look at the damage in some of the hard hit areas. These were incredibly powerful winds. You can see that in the building behind me that turned into a pile of rubble and metal. And we have new video to show you of cars being lifted off the ground. Like, um, not down back you can see the powerful storm as it moved through Salisbury just before two Monday afternoon. Look closely, witnesses report a rotation. And you can hear Salisbury University's tornado warning going off. The bulk of the damage was right next to the campus. Dude, he was in the car over there. I know. Can you imagine that? In the storm's wake, cars were stacked like toys on top of each other at this strip mall, lifted up, some with people inside. The wind picked up. We felt the glass shattering on the building. The awnings were like almost ready to lift. This incredible surveillance camera footage shows the moment a Ford got tossed into the air. Look up, the trees are like almost touching the ground, the wind's so strong, and all of a sudden, you know, I was like, run to the back. I heard what sounded like a freight train above the store, and it sounded like you know, bulls were running across the, uh, the roof. And then after that, we came outside and everything was destroyed. At least one building collapsed. The strong winds downed trees and damaged cars and homes but no one was injured, no one died. It's pretty crazy. It's um, like a weird anomaly for sure because there was no warning. A tornado on Maryland's eastern shore is rare, but if confirmed, this would be the second to strike here in just two weeks. And I've been here for 40 years and you know, you always hear about tornadoes and you wonder what it's like to experience it. And we were very fortunate in that no one got hurt and minor damage. The National Weather Service plans to send a team here to determine if this was a tornado and how strong those winds were. In Salisbury, Mike Helgren, WJZ Eyewitness News. And WJZ First Morning Weather coverage continues. Bob Turks in the First Morning Weather Center tracking radar and has a closer look at the storm that hit Salisbury. Bob? I take a look at live weather. Right They're still getting rain across the lower eastern shore and the lower portion of the bay right now, just southeast of Salisbury. About uh, Snow Hill, still through shower activity along the beaches there. Nothing around much of the rest of the region. Just a few sprinkles or showers are possible. Now we look into the storm that hit the Salisbury. Take a look at the Doppler radar. 
right inside that circle, if you see some different colors adjacent to each other, that shows some rotation for just a very short time, maybe a minute or two, there was some indication that there may have been some rotation. So once again, the weather service will come out tomorrow and they'll look at the scene to see whether there was debris scattered in circular form. They'll be able to determine just about whether it was a tornado and how really how strong the winds were. Obviously, from, from that video, they had extremely strong winds. In fact, I've never seen cars roll over like that. At least not in the Maryland area, not in a long, long time. So we're going to see any more storms later this week. I'll let you know in the first morning forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you.